Hey everybody, and welcome to Disney's The Haunted Mansion Call of the Spirits game. Here we have a uh, setup uh, to start a two player game. Um, we have green here and we have uh, gray here. We have player one, player two, uh, because my name is Richard, my wife's name is Jen. That's been done before, so I just go player one, player two. Uh, we have the event deck set up. We have the ghost deck uh, waiting for us to draw ghosts. That's how we get our points for the game. And we have the haunt deck. Also, just below camera, we have bidding dials that go from zero to three. Haha, -ha, it's like I set that up to uh, show you that. We also have the first play marker. Literally, whoever's going first that round will have this, just so everyone remembers who is first, of course. And I don't know how well it blends in, but we also have the hitchhiking ghosts who start in the crypt. So however many players there are, they start in the uh, seance room there. And I think we're good to get started. So, literally, how do you play the game? So there are two phases. First is the what they call the event phase. That's basically the set up the board for players to play. And then the second phase, of course, they call the action phase. That's the players now take their turn. So let's do the event set up the board phase for this round. That means first thing we do, draw the event card. And look at it. Okay, so we are dealing with the hitchhiking ghosts. Every round, they will move. They will move that many spaces in that direction. So this is counterclockwise. So if we continue like that, you can see the ghosts there. They'll continue on like that. So that means, um, okay, so you can see this is the endless hallway. And you can see it's separated here. So this part of the hallway goes to that room, that room, that room, that room. So following that, we go one, two, three. And now we are in the opposite end of the house in the attic. Now, if we look at the card, we will say you do not have to be in the same room as another player to duel with them. So that's important to remember. So we can duel, but you have to be in the same room as them. And if you are someone who has already done a run through of this and screwed up, so you deleted the video and are now doing a second run through of it, don't forget they have to be in the same room as another player to duel them. And that'll just go face up by the event deck. All right, so that's the event deck. That's the hitchhiking ghosts. Now we put ghosts in the mansion. The ghosts, like I said, are how we're going to get points. So how many players are there? There are two players, so we draw two cards. Then, regardless of however many uh, players there are, you draw one, two, three more. So in a two-player game, you'll always be putting out five cards. In a four-player game, you'll be putting out seven cards and six for three, etc. So uh could i draw them like this i guess it doesn't really matter because i don't even know what they are so you start putting them out on the board by uh you know who where the hitchhiking ghosts are and the first two cards whatever it is the first two no matter how many players there are the first two cards go with the hitchhiking ghosts so we got this card yeah this card yeah so i'm just gonna put these out um, so, okay, so like I said, uh, the hitchhiking ghosts get two cards, like the room they're in gets two cards, and then clockwise, I know they move counterclockwise, but always clockwise, uh, the next room will get one card, one card, and yes, indeed, one card. And in fact, before I set this down, so these are our cards. They each have a type, and the types will have their own colors, and I know these are both green, but they're very specific, different green. Anyways, so this is the type. In these picture frames are how many points we get, and underneath it, four. In this case, how many cards we get. Um, oh, one did come out. Or you have this type, and there are four different types of these white cards. Uh, the, mm, it, I want to say elongating portraits, the stretching portraits. Um, so this is for three of a kind 
For three of a kind of a card, you get 15 points. Or, because there are four different kinds, if you get one of each, you can get 18 points instead. So it's nice going for one or the other. Okay, and I grabbed this one from this room, and this was going to that room. All right, so now the next phase is what they call the action phase, what I call the now players take their turns phase. So player one, green, is going to take uh, their turn first. Go figure. And I have a reference card. Everyone has a reference card in their own color. Um, they would just set it there in their player area. Um, so I'll just set this aside. As it's not needed, on your turn, you can move. And a movement is you're going to always stay in the endless hallway or the seance room. Um, when you're in the endless hallway of this graveyard section, well, that's where you are. Even though you're in the endless hallway, you're in the graveyard, yeah? And then you can move back to the seance room. Or, as you can see with these different uh, borders, you can hop, hop, hop. Uh, you get, okay, so you get three actions. One movement is one of those actions taken. Another possibility is you can rotate the endless hallway. What? You can do what? So let's say I'm here and I want to get over there. Or say an opponent is there and I want them to get over there. I would just go one, two, just make sure the border's lined up. And there is no, I'm not counting because I'm supposed to count. I'm counting basically out of just habit. And yeah, there it is. So a rotation of the hallway. There is no limit on how far you can spin it. You can spin it all the way around. If you're into annoying your opponents, you can keep going going. I don't recommend that. Um, but yeah, anyways, so, so that's a movement there. Or if you are there and you want to do you want to get over there, you don't have to do one, two movements. You can just go one rotate in lieu of taking two movements. Okay, so that's that. Okay, I can collect. That's literally take a card. Now, if you're, oh, now if you are in a room with a, or taking a card in the room with a hitchhiking ghost, there is consequence. There's two of them, so that's nice. Maybe there's two cards that you even want, but you would have to also take a haunt card. Now, a haunt card has between uh, a value of between one and three, and at the end of the game, whoever has the most of okay, whoever has the most of a type of card. Let's say for some reason, everyone uh, you only have one card. Um, if, uh, let's say, player one has a value of three haunt, and player one has a value of one haunt, while player three has more haunts. They're more haunted. So they would have to get rid of um, whatever type of card they have the most of. So, whoop, and that no longer counts for points, as, as my example of having only two cards at all and no more. Uh, these are exactly the same in terms of points and consequence, so I'll just, even if they're backwards, that's fine. Uh, it doesn't mess up uh, point or consequence, so. Another action you can do of the three actions is, the fourth option is dual. So, if we were in the same room, that's right, you have to be in the same room as the other person whose, uh, whose card you're trying to take. Um, when you're in the same room, you can claim a duel, and you can say, uh, I want your card, and uh, player two is taking player one's card. And I will, I want it so much, I'll take two haunt cards just to get it. And player one's like, well, I mean, I like the card, but I don't know. So I will take one card, and hopefully I can keep it. Hopefully you only pick one card so that I can keep it. Whoever already owns the card, if there is a tie, keeps the card. But in this case, no, it would go to player two, and both players have to take the amount of haunts they said they would be willing to take to 
have slash keep the card. So player one gets one, player two gets two. And action number five, discard. Discard what? You don't want to discard your points. No, but you want to discard your haunts. And if you are in the seance room, we are both in the seance room right now. I am in the graveyard now, dining room now. But if I'm in the seance room now, I can discard one of the haunt cards that I have drawn. So, like I said, if this is the second time you're, you're doing a playthrough uh, because you messed up two of the rules, one of them repeatedly, then try to remember to not repeatedly forget to be in the seance room before you discard your haunt cards. Also, you will notice you can duel once per turn. You get three actions. Only one of them is allowed to be a duel. Same with the discard. Only one of them is allowed to be a duel. And speaking of duel, and that is why this card says you do not have to be in the same room as another player to duel them. This round only, you can just go ahead and say, hey, you, way over there, I'm dueling you. And they go, what? And they say, I'm dueling you. And they go, oh, okay, and then pull out a gun and, and then you go about it. Okay, so let's actually start. Oh, let's actually start for real, real. Okay, so player one, what would you like to do? Well, player one's thinking, well, it seems silly to get one of the cards in here already. Um, I don't especially am craving one of those cards to get me as many points as I possibly could. I could get that. I could move the Hitchhiking Ghost to two rooms, and that's in either direction. When I collect this card, this is okay when uh, another player is on the board and you move them and you're like, ha ha, you get haunt cards. Because every time the Hitchhiking Ghosts move and they move through a, let's see, they move through a room that you are in, you get a haunt card. And if you are in a room where they stop, you get two haunt cards. So this is good when you're trying to get your opponent to draw haunt cards. And you just get two points. Straight up. So I'm not going to take that card. This one, draw a haunt card when you collect this card. I'm not that hard up for four points right now, so I'm going to hope a bunch of green cards come out before the end of the game. And we know it will be the end of the game because of the bottom four cards, one of those is the end of game card. Uh, you draw that, you play the round like you normally would, you add three more ghosts, and boom, at the end of that round, count up your points and go about it. So player one has moved one space and will take this card. Uh, sure. And player one gets a second, uh, sorry, third uh, action to take. And the third action he will take, I suppose, could do another movement and might as well be in the uh, seance room. Because there are cards where the ghosts can move, as we see, three spaces and any direction takes you to the other side of the board. A one is inevitable, a two is not as likely, and a three is less likely, but they are there. So, let's just go to the seance room and call it a day. The seance room is a day. No, it's a seance room. So player two is going to go. Player two is considering, yeah, you can take haunt cards. That's not the end of the world because, like we said, we can get rid of a haunt card once per turn. But then you don't want them building up and up and up and you're using a bunch of uh, uh, turns to get rid of haunt cards. So let's, ah, uh, whatever, let's take the easy route. Let's take what will be two points at the end of the game. Okay, so that's the end of the round. That's really it. Take three actions. Take, oh, I didn't take a third action. I guess, I guess. Because the ghosts could easily pass by. So 
I guess, I guess, uh, player, uh, the first player marker then goes around clockwise to the next player who happens to be, happens to be sitting over here for player two's turn. And now we draw a new event card. Oh, so move three spaces. There it is, another three right there. Boom. Um, what is this? Counterclockwise. And let's do that. So one, two, three, back in the crypt. Back there. And one, two cards for two players. One, two, three cards for drawing three more cards. Okay, so uh, I'm pretty sure I do it this way. I don't think it matters, but, you know, there's a nice pair there. And then clockwise, continue, continue. Wow, whoops. Continue. Player one's kind of thinking, I should have stayed in this hallway. I would have gotten a haunt card, but then I could have. Nope, I'm wrong. Move, take, but then move. So you only get three actions. Oh, why is there only three actions? Why can't there be four? And if there was four actions, why is there only four actions? Why can't there be five? So, yeah. So player two is going to go. Oh, which it will happen after reading the uh, condition. At the end of your turn, you may discard one of your ghost cards to discard two haunt cards. Okay, one of your haunt cards, two haunt cards, oh, 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 two haunt cards, two haunt cards. So you take a full turn and then discard a card. Player two is kind of thinking, that, that could be cool, that could be cool. One of your ghost cards. That's nicer when it comes out later. Because I don't want to suddenly give myself uh, haunt cards just to get rid of haunt cards. That seems silly. On the other hand, we do have this one. We do have this one. And it's only worth two points. Player two is going to do it. So, let's hope for a third red card that... I, player two, can get. Let's go one, two, okay. So that's movement one, uh, and pick one card, and pick another card. That's three movements. One, two, three. My turn is, or at, I'm at the end of my turn now, so this is going to get discarded. I'll just set it up there, and I can get, oh, sorry. When you draw cards uh, in the room with the Hitchhiking Ghost, take one haunt card per card. So I didn't do that as I was taking it, but I'm doing it now. So I we are caught up. We are caught up properly. So like I said, I discard that one to discard two haunt cards. And I've gotten rid of one and one. Okay. There, one, two, or three. I, whatever, whatever. I'm get, I was getting rid of it. It's just nice when you have a three and you get to get rid of it. But better to have none. Okay, so that's player two, who is happy with that. Player one, what you gonna do? We're going green. It looks like we're going hard on green. So, so let's. One, two, and I guess we're going to go back because the haunted hitchhiking ghosts don't uh, go through the seance room. So if you're in the seance room, when the ghosts move, you are protected from them. And with no haunt cards, well, I mean, only have three actions anyway. It's my third actions, but, you know, when you're in the sandstorm, you can get rid of it. That's where the tightness comes in. You only get three, three actions. And that's round two. So, first player, oh, 
goes clockwise to player one. And new round condition. Another three, wow. Okay, so three clockwise. And although player two is in the room with the haunted ghosts, you don't have to worry about that when you're moving into a room where they already are, or if they start moving where you already are, don't worry about it. You get no uh, haunt cards. It's only when, only when they pass through or into a room uh, where you would have to draw the haunt cards. Condition is, if you end your turn in the endless hallway, okay, you may immediately move into the seance room. Oh, so player two in the future can then, or could then, you know, end in the hallway and could have come into the seance room. It would have been fine because they're not drawing haunt cards anyways, but yes, you get kind of a fourth action on condition that fourth action is move into the seance room. Uh, Free action, bonus action. Yeah, nice bonus. All right. So we're going to go one, two, I'll do it like this three, four, five. Like I said, it shouldn't matter, but okay. I'm just going to go on to the board. Oh, what am I doing? Okay. This one. This one. Ooh, player one likes that. This one. This one, and this one. Oh. Well, of course, player one wants that green one. And it's a lot nicer than trying to get this green one, which he also can get. And that one there. See, this is the advantage of staying in the endless hallway, because you can... It had player one... Let, pretend player one ended their turn there. He could take the card, move there, or rotate, whichever he ends up wanting to do, and take that card. And that's three actions. That's the advantage of staying in the hallway. The disadvantage, of course, getting haunt cards. But player one didn't do that, did he? So, one, take, oh, take, and, Oh, don't worry, he's thinking about what's next. Because you can go into player, if I were to rotate the endless hallway, player two can't just take that one. He would have to use an action before just freely taking it. So we're going to rotate the endless hallway so that I start here and the hitchhiking ghosts will move out of this room, which will not affect, um, you know, which. I won't get haunt cards when they move next round. So, done. One, take, rotate. Player two says, that's a good card because you can discard a haunt card when you get this one, but we don't have haunt cards. I keep discarding them. Okay, and we're back. That's the disadvantage of uh, recording in your kitchen. It's everybody's kitchen. Okay, so I had said... Player two likes this, well, everyone likes this card, but we don't have haunt cards. That's senseless to uh, draw that. Now you could hate draft. And in fact, that might be the strongest uh, action to take right now. This one you get a point, no matter what. Then you can get um, a point for each unique icon. It's a little early to know how many unique icons uh, well either of us are going to get. So I think hate drafting is my best bet. So what I'm going to do is instead of just going there, well, that seems silly. In the first place, taking two actions just to get there, I'm going to go, whoa. Now, when the hitchhiking ghosts move, there's a chance that you're going to have to take a uh, haunt card and I take your green. It's not yours, it's mine. Mwahaha. Anyways, so that's done. And then action number three, obviously I'm not taking another card. I was like, oh, move in and duel. But I can't because if I moved, that would just move and that's it. So I'm just gonna protect myself from the hitchhiking ghosts. 
And that will be that. So player two gets the first player marker. So this, you may move, immediately move into the seance room. Player one did not do that because he was hoping to get that card right away as an action and then get something, or that other card. Nothing worked out for him. Ah, uh, well, such is a game. So two spaces counterclockwise. And indeed, ho ha, player two is like, all right, my random hope actually happened. So player one now takes one, two, Haunt cards, and they are four. So player two knows that player one has two haunt cards, but doesn't know their value. So two haunt cards will go there, and there is no limit to the number of actions you may use to discard haunt cards in the seance room. So like I said, during each uh, turn, you can only discard one haunt card. You can only use one action to discard a haunt card. The other two must be something else. This says, no, go ahead. Once you're in the seance room, hey, if you start in the seance room and you have three haunt cards, you can get rid of three haunt cards. Player one does not start in the haunt room. And player two <laughs> doesn't have haunt cards. <laughs> so, one, two three, four, five. Okay. And that's how you draw. One, two, and then one. Wow, what a gold mine of just cards if you're looking for, you know, just cards. And there. The attic is where you store all your stuff, so that's what happened. Okay, so player two goes first and will indeed go one, two, haha. I took my green cards. Um what do you think? You hoping to get a pair? Let's hope to get a pair, because one card ain't getting me nothing, but two, yeah okay. For one more card I'll get seven points. I'll I can do that. And that's three turns for player two, who's going to stay in the endless hallway. Now, player one, would you like to gain more cards, or do you want to discard your haunt cards right now? You know what? Actually, that is what player one's going to do, because then he's also protected this round from when the hitchhiking ghosts move. Because if he didn't do that, then he'd go to another room and try to take cards and then stay there. He knows he would do that, so... Let's discard one, two cards. And haunt cards always go at the bottom of the haunt deck. And that's the turns. So, uh, yeah, I'm saying the right word, turns. So, clockwise to player one, who will be the first player this round. And let's move the hitchhiking ghosts two spaces. Uh, clockwise. Boom, boom, isn't that nice? Boom. Now you're the one with haunt cards. Oh. Sorry. Two and three. Oh, that's five haunts. I don't want that. And each time you use an action to rotate the endless hallway, draw a haunt card. Perhaps let's not uh, rotate the endless hallway this turn. Let's go right there. Okay, so I need two, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, jeez. Two cards. One. Wow, gold mine. You can get four of a. Right? Yeah, that's a. That's four. Gee, okay, two. Oh, there's a pair right there. Oh. Mm. Uh, and in the crypt. So player one. There's some nice cards. 
Peyron's kind of just thinking like, let's just grab a, I have three cards. You have five. Oh, okay. So what do I take? Maybe I try to get my own pair for a second move. Right? No. No, I take backsies. Okay, I take backsies. So, I'm looking at what I have and what you have. And I want what you have. So RPG style. Battle screen. Okay, so. Uh, battle music. Super Mario RPG is my RPG. So, we have our um, uh, bidding dials. So player one, who is green, who is on this side, you get it. Okay, so player one wants this, uh, one of these cards, wants one of these cards. And player two probably wants to keep it. So, uh, I do want it, want it. How much? Sorry, I'm thinking, how much does player two want to keep that card? You want to keep it, jeez. Okay, 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 okay. And, and, ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. They're both right in front of the camera. Okay, go. Ah! 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 Oh, I didn't declare which card. Is the top green card. Oh, you, 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 get, you get it, you get it. Uh, obviously, I want a green card. I'll just take the top green card. Anyways, okay, so we both have to draw two haunt cards, and whoever already has the card keeps the card in the event of a tie. Seriously, okay. Bah! That wasn't even worth it. That was a waste of a turn. Why would you do that? <laughs> and one, two. Okay. So that was one battle. Well, fine. I'm here now. I'm going to take this, which would make a pair there. Huh. Player two says, all right, that's your two actions. Fine. Oh, 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 I'm in the room with the, with the hitchhiking ghost. I need to take a haunt card for having taken that card in their room. So I take another haunt card. And player two is all like, fine. Works well enough for me. I'm not rotating the hallway because I would have to draw a haunt card. So I'm going to move one. No, I'm not dueling you. I'll just take this to get its pair. And I got a few unique icons. You know what? I got a few unique icons. I will see if this will be worth it. There. There we go. That was one, two, three, which makes it player, oh, going clockwise, player two's turn. Player two, move the hitchhiking ghosts, three, oh, away from player two. So lucky you. One, two, three. At the start of your turn, you may draw one haunt card to take an extra to take an extra action this turn. So I can take four turns. On condition, I take a haunt card, which could be worth it if it's worth it. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five. So one, one here, two, Stretching portrait one and then clockwise one, two. The attic is still a great place. I should keep moving back and forth, but anyways, anyways, anyways. Player two is going to make this work. So he hopes. One movement. Two, taking this card, which will give me three points or 13 if I have the lowest haunt value at the game's end. 
So he's taking a chance. Open. He ends up with the least amount of points because he's doing all right with what he has right now. Player one is wussing out, I guess. I don't know what's going on there. What's what's up with that? So player two is now thinking, let's see if I can get rid of haunt cards. So I'm going to go to the seance room. That's action three. I can't do anything this round. But let's see if I can have more rounds to uh, deal with haunt cards. Uh, that's a full sentence. So player one is in this room. And player one is saying, oh, you misunderstand. I'm not playing around. I'm one, two, three actions deep in uh, what I'm getting. All I need is that parasol. And there's no way player two is going to know that that's what I want to get. Okay. So that that's that round. Player, here we go. One's turn. So we have the new... Oh, 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 oh. I can take a haunt card to take an extra turn. Because then, no, I'm not going to worry about the Hitchhiking Ghosts because I've drawn so many threes. The odds are very small that the next card will be a Haunt. So I'm not going to do that. Um, draw a Haunt card when you collect these cards. So no, I'm not going, no, and I have to be in the Seance Room to discard a Haunt card. Or even to Duel if that's what I wanted to do. So... No. Now, now let's uh, continue on. Player one turn. Well, four. Come on. Four clockwise. So, one, two, take a haunt card. Four. All right. Player. She was happy with, uh, with what player, player one is getting. In all the duels, only the player who gets the ghost card must draw the number of haunt cards they bid. So the winner gets a haunt card. So how badly do you want to win versus how badly do you want to lose? Interesting, interesting. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, fix this a little bit. And we go. One, ha, another parasol. Two. One, one, and one. Player one kind of feels inevitable. Ah. All right, I'm not going to duel you because I need to use two actions just to get to where I want to go. So I'm going to rotate to get myself there. I'm going to take the parasol there. I now have one of each um, type of these white cards. That's 18 points right there. One, two. And do I take another one? Do I get... Because I can draw a haunt card, move the ghosts. I would take a ghost if uh, if the ghost would affect the other player. Um, if I moved, I wouldn't be able to take a card this round anyways. So maybe, maybe I will just go here. I can't duel you. I can't get rid of a haunt card, but I can start there. And that's a start. So player two, what you gonna do? There's a nice green card that would get me more points. I'm gonna take a gamble. My first action will be to get rid of Haunt card. Choose 
which haunt card I want to get rid of. Well, the biggest one, of course. So, yes, player one, I have three cards. Let me get rid of that three. Put it under the bottom of the haunt deck. And then, I'm taking a risk. I'm going to take a risk. These guys can give me another haunt card. So I move into the crypt. It's covered up. <laughs> uh, the crypt. And I will take this card, which will give me two points, but I can discard a haunt card when I collect this card. So I am going to collect this card. Um, I'll just set it with uniques. And I'll get rid of a two. Okay. But that does mean I'm ending my turn in the endless hallway. So that means no duel. No. And pay, uh, play passes clockwise to player two. Okay. Sorry. Uh, let's move first. <laughs> move first. So clockwise, three. One, two, three. And if you end your turn in the seance room, discard a haunt card. Okay. Okay. In the seance room, discard a haunt card. Player one is thinking that we should get cards out first. Three, four, five. So we go one, two, three, four, five. All right, player one. Oh, player two. Sorry, it's player two's turn. It's player two's turn. And he needs to take a haunt card, which did not happen yet. Hitchhiking goes past by player two, which he didn't want, but Let's add that to our collection. So, player two. Player two is thinking of taking a risk. You see there are three of these signs out. Give me a sec. So I'm going to take, I'm starting in that room, and I'm going to take one, two cards for starting in that room. This, there's another pair in this room, and this, there are three of these signs out. I would just need this round, next round, and the round after to get it if player one didn't go for that as well. Nothing ventured, nothing gained though. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. So this is can you see that? Um whatever. I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna put that there. Just right there. And then move back to the seance room. To discard a haunt card per the event card. Okay, so I'm going to discard this, of course. Everyone's getting a little bit jealous about uh, him getting rid of cards. Player, so what's player one going to do? Because he can also have a pair, but then he would have to take a haunt card, which he wants rid of. After a bit of thought, player one decides, all right, so what I'm going to do is just go here. Grab the fourth green card, which gets 16 points, isn't that lovely? And go back to the seance room. Uh, discard a haunt card. So player one's haunt cards. One, two, two, three. Of course I'm gonna get rid of the three. Okay. And that, uh, and your room in this, uh, and your turn in the seance room, you you get rid of a haunt card just in case I hadn't said that. So we uh, now move on to boom, player one's turn. He flips a card that says, "Oh, final round." All right, this is this is the end. So where's the hitchhiking ghost to there? So three counter clockwise, and he they will not one two three effect any of us in their movement. So three, oh, put three extra ghosts. So we've always been putting five. Let's put eight out onto the board. So the bottom, you take the bottom three cards out, 
shuffle the uh, final round uh, as a part of that. And so one of the final four cards will be it. And this one happened to be the first one. So we have eight cards to put out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Putting on their last hurrah. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back where we started from, eight. Player one uh, turn is now. So this is it, player one. You've got to make it count. What you going to do? Player one did not end up getting a pair, so maybe that's what he would like to do. Because um, you can't just start another uh, set while you are in the room. Um, haunt, discard a haunt. Draw a card. Move the ghost. Draw a card. I think that's what player one is going to do. It's going to use a movement, finish a set. So that he's not getting zero points and then instead is getting seven. Uh, then for his third, draw this, which gives him a point and lets me draw a card from the ghost deck. So I blindly will get another one on top of it. And do I get points? No, I get no points for that. Oi, oh, you take a risk. Right, you take a risk. All right. So player two, what you gonna do? You got some... Wouldn't it be lovely... Ah, and you're in the center. Wouldn't it be lovely to have started in one of these rooms that had the signposts so that you can get... And there's even three. One, two, three. But you can only move, take one, move, but that's it. Ah, uh, and there's no special, hey, just turn in this card and you can um, have a fourth movement. There was a condition earlier. Ah, uh, shoot. Instead of giving myself points, I'm feeling confident here. I've only got two ones, and they have three cards, so even if they're all ones, I, player two, inevitably will have less haunt cards. So, instead, I'm uh, just going to have some fun. So that's one movement. And I can take this card. And I get two points. And I move the hitchhiking ghosts. Three, come on, three rooms when you collect this card. One, two, and regular effects happen. Three means player one draws two. Haunt cards. And since I'm at it, might as well take two more points. Move the hitchhiker can go two rooms, which does nothing for anyone, but I'll get two points for that. And I'll just, of course, move one, two away from me. Imagine. That's the game. So now we count up our points. Before we count up our points, let's see how many haunt points we have. Well, player two has two haunt points. Player one has one, three, five, seven, eight. So player one loses the uh, haunt count, I guess. Player one is most haunted. I'm sitting there. Which means you have to take... Um, whatever type of card you have most of and discard it. So this 16 points player one was going to get is now bupkis. That's discard word. It's at the end of the game. So now we count up the points we now have. Okay, so we have this extra axe that we took which is nothing. And 
That means all we have now are these cards. So one, two, three, four different types, which they're all white, so you know they're of the same set, but they're all different types. That's uh, 18 points. Okay, 18, 19. And we have a set. 19 is 26. Okay. So, player one is 26 points. Can you beat that player too? I'm pretty sure you can. Let's see. Well, first of all, this was a, a, a chance that ended up not working out. Done. Everything else can get me points. Let's start with this card. I can get three points or 13 if I have the lowest haunt value at the game's end. I did. So I start at 13 points right off the bat. 13, two is uh, 17, 18, hmm, 18. So uh, I'm gonna count this last. So 17 I said, right? 13, 17, I'll count that last, 17, 19, 20, 21, 20, 23, oh, 30, this is nothing, so I'll just set that there, 30, oh, shoot, but no red, no more reds came out, so nothing, I only have two, nothing, I took the risk, it ended up not working out, nothing, so what, I'm at 30, 31 plus one for each unique icon. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. These don't have icons. 35 points for player two. So player two wins this game. And there you have it. Thank you very much for joining me this time, and we'll see you next time. Bye.